Well, uh, the, the idea of, uh, of this workshop is to uh, discuss uh, with, uh, with you um, about uh, uh, how to, to increase the participation uh, uh, in, uh, in our community, uh, participation in, uh, in general. Um, usually, uh, we, we take care about uh, uh, developer, new developer. We have uh, uh, Jan that uh, uh, is a, a mentor for a new developer. Uh, we have uh, something similar for uh, uh, documentation and uh, uh, um, some, uh, some members of the, the community are working uh, on, the, on the wiki to uh, take care about uh, all the uh, pages related to getting started in uh, QA uh, development, uh, documentation, and, and so on. Uh, but uh, um, those uh, aren't uh, all uh, our uh, um, contribution area. So uh, what uh, can we do in, uh, in, in the other, uh, in the other uh, uh, areas? Uh, we could talk uh, about uh, diversity, diversity in general. Uh, I think that uh, we, we could uh, uh, work uh, also uh, with, uh, with schools, with the uh, university, uh, because um, with schools and the university, uh, we have uh, the, the possibility to, to find uh, uh, new, new contributors. Um, and, uh, uh, in particular, I, I would like to, uh, to make a uh, uh, strong uh, relationship uh, with uh, other uh, free software uh, projects uh, like uh, the Fedora One or uh, Gnome, uh, Ubuntu, and, and so on. So uh, the, the idea of, uh, of this panel uh, is, to, uh, is to discuss uh, and uh, uh, find uh, where uh, we, can, uh, we can do more and uh, uh, how we can do more for, uh, for be a more inclusive uh, project. Um, so, um, for, uh, for, our, uh, for our community, um, we also talk about uh, um, development, but uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the most important uh, um, uh, the, the most important part uh, are uh, our users, and uh, we need to find a way to uh, involve uh, them and to involve them to uh, use the, the software and then to uh, contribute uh, to, the, to the project. Any, any idea on uh, how to? Um, Marina said before this talk that we would, would rather, we would really like to, so, so I talked about the gender diversity because I'm on, of a different gender than the majority of people in this room and so did Yona. But this is not what we want to focus on exclusively and we'd like to focus also on the other types of div diversity. For example, how to, how to include more, more people with disabilities into our project because like we are all that are sitting here, we are able-bodied, so we just have no mental model or frequently can't even imagine what kind of issues those people can have. And it, if we don't include them in the community, we will never find out. And I could go on like this about like all, all the different, or, or I don't know, for example, like different, different nationalities, people who don't write from, from left to right, from, but from right to left. We also have, like, we, we can improve LibreOffice in this way as well if we, if we in include more right-to-left writers and speakers. Uh, we can easily, like, somehow widen our user base and, like, make the product less buggy for people whose uh, language and is, is not really the default one or the majority one. So, yes, again, I, I can't stress this enough would like to focus like on, on different kinds of diversities, not just the gender one. And with that, I'd like to pass the microphone on. Th 
So I'm not sure that we, or I'm not really aware of the really problems we are having in this way. I have been working with people which are like, yeah, working with uh, languages which are not written left to right, and I have after I've got bug reports, I fix stuff in the KDE backends for them. So I did not really have, and I, I went through that way into the Debian community because the guy was also working there. Same as, in the, at least in the QA channel, there were some people coming there which say, okay, we have some disabilities and something in 5.2 or something broke the accessibility framework and it's much worse than before. And they said, okay, please create bug reports and then we will have a look. So I'm, I'm not sure at, this po at which point we really actively have to do something. I mean, when somebody opens a bug report, stuff probably will get fixed. Now we can talk about priorities, but we are on, uh, we are on, uh, we are paid sometimes. Um, I think most of, the, probably even most of the contributors which do a large contributions are paid. So I'm not sure how to handle that in a more fair way or good way, but stuff happens there and it's not like they are ex excluded per se. At, at least that's my point of view, which I see from the community. Okay, we, we have to, wait, wait. Do we have another microphone, probably? Or? Uh, please use the mic. Um, I think it's it's not a gender problem. Um, it's a diversity problem. Tomorrow we will talk about the project that we are doing uh, as Libretalia in Rome with the Public Institute for Deaf People. And for example, in this case, uh, we know that there are a lot of informative people that are really good uh, to develop because they are deaf. So um, they have, um, we can say, implement a different way to learn some different things, but we had the problem to communicate with them because um, they, um, how we can say, the they way of learn and understand things is a little bit different. Uh, for example, to make uh, all the material for this project, uh, we had to need to collaborate and to work with the um, person who understand the, um, the disability as a diversity, as value and not as a minus we can see. And for example, maybe it's the point uh, about what we can see is for how we can push the community to be more inclusive because um, I'm not a technique, okay? But I think that openness uh, could give um, this opportunity and maybe could be opportunity for all of us. Mm. How do know if I can take the point for the disability, for example? Because to develop a code, I, I mean that maybe from a technical point of view could be the same things. So you have to, to write a code, so maybe could be the same. But it's different the way of think and the way to learn. And that is important, for example, uh, the collaboration with the schools or with the universities, because we have, um, also when mm, we do some projects in the schools about the awareness uh, and uh, we can say it's uh, digital freedom, so about not only the project of LibreOffice, but about all the things that are included in openness, we had to, um, to know, and this could be a great point to make the community more big and more inclusive with, uh, I can say, other different people that is, are not only, I mean, it's not only from a technical point of view, it's also for grow up the community about culture, we can say, a culture of openness.
So this this example you mentioned that there were some some people coming to IRC and telling us, "Hey guys, your your new template manager is really cool, but I'm blind since birth and I can't use it because it doesn't work with the screen reader, and I have absolutely no mental image how how a screen reader works and what I as a developer can do." to make the project I'm developing more accessible because I don't have any disability and I'm simply not aware of the needs of those people have. And it actually takes some, some well, I'm, I'm reluctant to say, like you, you need to have balls, but the, the barrier, like you, you have to actively go to the IRC and say, hey guys, your software sucks. You have to do something and this this requires quite some courage and I, I assume like not, not everybody has that courage and not everybody has even the means to go to IRC channel and yell at the developers. So this is something perhaps we're, we're, we're doing wrong that we're like we ourselves have some privilege and like from the height of that privilege we, we don't see the different people with the different needs. This is something we, we should somehow perhaps strive to improve. In my experience, we have to be very careful when, when we talk about making groups of people, never mind big groups, small groups, because if we focus on a group and want to attach that group, we sort of push, push all the other groups away. What we need to do is to be open whenever somebody from a group comes to us. And we have one big untapped uh, force that we don't use at all. We have our user base. We have contact with our user base through the update pointer. We actually know, know where they are out there. So we could, instead of focusing on single groups, we could send out messages to our, to our users. Also, all uh, closed software do that. They make announcements every now and then which are generic, asking, for instance, do you have any problems with the software? Are you a, are you a power user? Would you like to help us confirming a couple of bugs? Just to just to make uh, sure, uh, there is a bug uh, that has been already, um, let's say, blessed by the UX guy. In the help menu, we have now new entries. One entry will lead, uh, bring the user, the installed base to the localized forums and uh, question and answers. Another one that will go in will be to address, to, to get the user to the docu uh, documentation page. So we narrow the gap between the software and the user base. So this is on the way. Okay. More questions? So um, I, I, I like the suggestions um, that were made. Uh, uh, yeah, made for example, um, uh, regarding using the leveraging what we have in, in LibreOffice it's, itself already. Um, one thing uh, that I've seen as a problem is that um, over time, if we don't use a part of the software, if we don't uh, uh, test it, so say um, we don't have many people developing and testing on uh, on the Mac. Um, we don't have that many people testing or at least vocally testing with screen readers. So if maybe we made um, more of a framework, um, you know, like those little signs, like 10 days without a workplace accident. So if we, if we had something like that that said, you know, how many days since we've had feedback on one of these major components, such as using a screen reader, reader with LibreOffice, um, that might visually help us stay better on top of the topics that 
you know, the community can deem what's important, maybe, you know, raise priority, but if we want to say we want to be accessible for people who are blind, then we could have that be one of our dashboard items, um, and that would be a tool, um, you know, to help us stay up to date. That's just a thought. And uh, if I can add, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, about uh, the missing uh, test uh, and uh, QA activity on uh, uh, screen reader and so on, uh, we can try to, to involve uh, uh, some other contributor from uh, other project where, uh, for example, uh, uh, there are uh, support uh, uh, packagers and, and so on. This can be a, a way to to obtain uh, a, a better software. Yeah, something else that, uh, something interesting, what, for example, Launchpad and Ubuntu is using is that can, users can actually uh, actively subscribe to a bug and vote for a bug. So, so for obvious stuff, like something really big is broken, you, even as a developer, you can see you have to fix that quick. But when you have 10,000 bucks and everybody just says, oh, that's my lovely, pretty super bug, and every time we, we change that uh, to, okay, it's not so important, we think, the users come back and just uh, upscale the bug again. So probably at that point, something is missing that you can really see what is important for the user. Uh, I'm just yeah, talking Some no bugzillas have this feature, indeed. For example, OpenSUSE bugzilla. You can vote for bugs. So if, if it's if it's really like not so severe bug, but annoying one that Im impacts many users, they can they can vote and like. Okay, I've, it's already there or. Yes, it's already there. I'm okay. I'm not sure if it's uh, if if it can be somehow transplanted to our bugzilla or if it's some SUSE add-on. But indeed, in SUSE SUSE bugzilla, you can vote for a bug. And when I was a SUSE developer, one of my bugs collected record number of 52 votes. <laughs> Yeah, so because normally I just when I'm I'm mainly working on mail merge bugs and they yeah, are normally this is out of everybody's normal user scope and I just think okay probably I have time for that but yeah no really a measurement. Did I misunderstand a little slight thing? Because now we talk about box, we talk about making our software better, but that doesn't grow our community. I thought we wanted more people to come into our community and be active in the community also. Box is also important, of course. But it's, it's, it's related because if, if more diverse people come to our community and actually tell, tell us what, what, uh, what their needs are, what issues they face, this is how we can, as I mentioned that in my talk as well, this is how we can improve our software. But probably from according to what um, Ian said, uh, a good way to, to have inclusion, and in particular inclusion of diversity, uh, it's, you know, it's a self-powering um, system, meaning that including, trying to include uh, diverse people may help us to improve our software for them. So it could be, and, and to be honest, uh, we have some, you know, and one of them is uh, around. So, uh, and also what Emma said about the schools, probably it could be a, a good place to, uh, to find out some kind of diversities and to try getting them inside our community uh, from two point of views. The first is that well, there, there are plenty of people and you have many chances to, to find diversity there. And also, uh, you could, we could try profit also the, um, possibly the availability of uh, people specialized. 
meaning that, for example, in, in schools or in university or so on, I think much more in school than uh, high school and lower schools than university. But anyway, uh, sometimes they used to have uh, teachers specialized in, in, in you know, assistance to diversity. To, uh, so uh, you, you, could, uh, you could have two benefits from that, meaning that you could gather people and also people able to help them and us to, to be collaborative and to including. So it could be a, a good idea to, to go there and, uh, and also for other reasons because, you know, I always believe that school... <coughs> sorry. I also uh, believe that school are uh, the, first, uh, the, first, mm, the first place to, to think about because uh, from there, you know, you go to roots anyway. So, <laughs> from the from that point on, you know, uh, you, you can you can open mind to uh, to young people and and hopefully have them tomorrow contributing and, and joining the community. So, I have another um, suggestion, maybe. So, so we've been we've been uh, um, kind of mulling over ideas. Like uh, Robinson had a number of ideas and and. I really had, and, and Bubli were mentioning some, some things in her uh, talk before, like this uh, outreach program. So what I was wondering, do we have examples um, from the past where it worked, where we, we were able to uh, encourage people to, um, to join the project that would fall under this um, diversity label so that perhaps we could, we know what works and we could just copy that or transplant that to, to, to some other topic. Because it's, it's kind of abstract, what, what we're <laughs> talking about now. So I, maybe there was something like, I don't know, you said um, like the, the Turkish community with uh, Gulshan has been, um, I think, from Belgrade, there was a number of uh, GSOC students. Is there anything else that, that comes to mind? More questions? Yeah, just from uh, the last tech fest that was there, that was in May, and it was in Ankara. So I'm not sure I would go to Turkey now, but in May it was still okay. And this is why, unfortunately, like none of the Turkish hackers is here. Yeah. Because Actually. of state of, um, I, I was really looking forward but to. But they are, they are okay. I, I talked with them. I'm in contact with them. I, I okay. thought I would make the girls to... happy by, by showing the slide about them. Yeah, so they just said, okay, we're working for university. We are not allowed to travel. But anyway. Uh, and uh, actually, that Hackfest was uh, uh, three, three core developers, um, 15 girls and two boys. So it, it really, I don't think it much depends on how to get people inside. I think it, it's okay to organize Hackfests everywhere. And normally, TDF is paying for core developers to go there. Um, more, yeah. I don't know how I can encourage for people to say, okay, we want to do something. Yeah, it's, it's not really, yeah, broad knowledge. That's something like that. It's it. They say, okay, we want to do a LibreOffice or a free software hackfest, and please come somebody with some knowledge come there, and that's something this TDF is already doing. But I have a feeling that it's not happening enough of time, and probably we need some, yeah more information spreading at that point. Throw the outreach. I don't know. Yeah. So, and, and it just happens for developers. I'm sure it would be great to, to, to get some other people and like really UI designers that normally not stuff on the developers really great lads. So you have a group of, I don't know if there's something you can do at university, UI design, I don't know if, but if they do a hack fest and work on stuff, get some output of that would be great too. It's going to be an event in Berlin end of October. It's called Ladies Who Foss, focused on women. And I actually, I, I'm going there and I'd like to, I'd like to um, take our UX mentor Heiko with me. 
so that he can actually show some some easy hacks for for people who don't code because i i do think this is really a problem that there's a lot of mentoring a lot of resources available for people who code and it has something to do with what, what I mentioned in my talk, that the coders are some kind of aristocracy in the project. And everybody else, like those, those contributions, are sometimes like wrongly perceived as somehow less valued and much less resources and much less energy gets invested to them. Unfortunately, I have preciously little ideas how to change it because I'm, I'm a biased developer. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, how to fund all this stuff because everything is possible, but who will do the work, etc. So uh, should TDF hire some person who would continuously organize events at universities and schools? Because uh, Open Hatch nonprofit uh, was active still a couple of years ago, but unfortunately now it has somehow language. But uh, it had a very active organizer, and she uh, did like dozens of events at US community colleges. And it seemed pretty successful. So the attendance was great, and I guess the diversity as well. So I, I encourage everyone to go to their website and study all their event sites and use cases and, and stuff they learned. So it's openhatch.org. More questions? So, uh, uh, actually, in my professional life, uh, I've, been, uh, uh, I've been a professional PR person for 30 years in an environment where 95% of people are women and I was one of the men. And uh, so... Uh, it, it's, uh, it's always been tricky to look at, and, and it's true, I mean, uh, I, there, there has been a point in my life where I was heading a 48 people company in Italy and I was the only man. So 47 women and one man, uh, which is normal for PR. Um, and uh, so I've lived the opposite situation in uh, trying to attract more men into PR. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, there is uh, probably mm, something that we can, we might be doing with communication because I think there is um, an underlying perception that some roles are for men and some roles are for women independently from uh, the kind of the role. Uh, so I don't understand why communication is more for women and technology is more for men because I've been a man in communication and not really able to do technology a lot. Uh, it's difficult to know. I mean, the, the, the question is it, the attracting people. You go to universities. I've done... I've done internships in university to attract men in co into communication. And then uh, I've got stupid questions like, uh, oh, they will, they will think I, you know, I'm, I'm um, uh, let's call it gender questions in, in, in a man that is in a, in a women environment, which is totally stupid, I think. You, you, you evaluate individuals, not genders. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, in some cases, uh, and, and at the university, I have a degree in humanities, and although the number of women in humanities is lower than the number of women in PR, it was 75%. So it, it was, I, I did a university where 25% were men's and 75% were women's. Uh, and there are some, some long-time trends. Uh, uh, maybe we, we, we can help with some communication. Um, I don't know if doing focused stuff, uh, it's, it's helping really. Uh, I, would, I would like to help because it's, I, I, I understand your point of view, uh, which I cannot reproduce because I'm a man and therefore it's, uh, we, we, thanks God we are different because otherwise it's going to be boring. Uh, but uh, can we try to do something specific but in my opinion, without making this uh, a kind of, mm, I've always perceived that when you start into this kind of uh, discussions, uh, there is the risk that you increase the separation than, than uh, reducing it. Because in some cases, the feeling that you are alone, which I've had when I was adding a, a, a 48, person uh, company with 47 women and one man, uh, which is funny. So the main toilet, there was never a queue, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, and mm, let's try maybe to do something uh, with, uh, uh, also with media, uh, trying to help uh, but I think uh, I, would, I would like to, to, to get the help in general, not, maybe not focus on LibreOffice, more in, uh, let's say, women and technology, more than women and LibreOffice and a single project. Because otherwise, I think that the risk is that the, the perception is of walled gardens outside the project. Uh, sorry. If, but I was thinking while speaking, and it was evident because I'm usually a faster speaker, but uh, I really uh, don't know how to, help real, how to help in an effective way without looking uh, a kind of mm, separation. separation, yes. Was I clear or not? I don't know. I mean something that, in a sense, may embarrasses me because I never judged people according to gender. Never. So, um, and uh, um, so I've never uh, managed, I managed many people and I've looked at people like individuals. So, no, no. Uh, so if they were good at their job, they were good and full stop. Uh, and, but, of course, looking at the numbers, there is something that has to be solved. I just want to say that I uh, mm, agree with Italo, and that that's what I want. I wanted to point out before, uh, while Jana was talking, ma meaning what I meant when uh, when she talked about in special ways ways of communication just for women, special channels, just like many list or whatever. Uh, because, yes, uh, and as also Ian said, sometimes uh, even if in, with the best intentions, uh, there is a risk to uh, create uh, you know, exclusion and not inclusion. And I want to say also compliments because this is the first time I hear Italo without words. It's really an event, really. It's been incredible. Ian had really incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try to, 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 I mean, I try to think like a woman, oh, but it's no. really, <laughs> 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 and, and, and it's really difficult, although you know that one of the, I mean, the best thing of my life is my wedding, so, and I've always tell, told that, and I would have liked to have my wife here and listen to what my wife was, was saying, but unfortunately, my wife is not here, and uh, because, uh, 
I think uh, it's difficult as a man to figure out the perception that you have uh, being in the opposite part. And, but on the other hand, I think it's beautiful that we have different perception as otherwise it would be extremely boring in general. So, uh, but I was trying to figure out, I mean, if I were in their position, what I would do, but it's, sorry. It's 62 years that I'm a man, so it's difficult to think or try to think like a, a woman, and especially younger woman, because I, I, my wife is not, it's younger than me, but it's not that younger, so I, I know how uh, 55 years old women thinks, <laughs> not younger ones. So um, just, just some random thoughts on this whole topic. Um, the first is, I think it's a very good idea to start thinking with contributors right away and not so much about users. For the same reason, uh, if, you, if you look at the development channel of LibreOffice and <clears throat> someone comes in there and says, I want to have this pet bug fixed. Yeah. We smack him. And, uh, and the reason for that is if we don't, then two days later, uh, 200 other people will come up and uh, will show up with their pet bug. And <clears throat> so <clears throat> even if you're a uh, white, middle-aged uh, man from Germany like me, and ask for this bug to be fixed, I would still get said, get out or fix it yourself. So I think we should really start looking at the contributor side because then we can grow from there to actually support the users. Um, and so that's the first first thing. Second thing is, um, like like Torsten said, I think we, we need to find some some concrete goal and then we need to find a commitment to how to, what we want to do to achieve that. Because uh, right now I, we, we are only talking about ideas. And I can unfortunately not commit much time because I'm already drowning. So we need to, uh, we need to find, so I, this is why, I, yeah. I'm hesitant to say more, but uh, I still have a third point, uh, and this is an idea where I have no time to commit to it, so sorry <coughs> to do the same that we did uh, all time here. But um, we did some stuff with, with schools, um, for example, in Gran Canaria and stuff. And it, yeah, it is interesting, but for example, in Gran Canaria, it, it, it uh, failed because even the computer science students uh, we're mostly on Python and not interested in C++. So we have, we have a very high li uh, bar uh, uh, barrier to entry there. Um, so if we just want to look into diversity and not explicitly frame that in, oh, we want to talk to these people, which is a horrible way to, to start it off. Um, we are, uh, the Document Foundation is an NGO, and there are lots of NGOs that care about groups that have special interests. So we might just look, one, one way to, to start might be to look for another NGO that cares for specific uh, groups of the population and then uh, just do something together with them without explicitly calling it, we are doing this for that reason, just doing, um, an event about LibreOffice at their place. And it's pretty, pretty uh, Im implicit that because of the audience of this NGO, we will get to the topics that these people are interested in. So maybe that is a starting point. Well, one excellent example of such an NGO is the Software Freedom Conservancy that runs outreach program for women. Uh, the common misconception is this is a equivalent of Google Summer of Code to women, for women, which is not the case. And the interns in outreach program for women can work on any area. They don't have to be coders. So this would be an opportunity for the Document Foundation to cooperate, 
to, to somehow enter this outreach program and we could have we could have for example documentation in turn or an infra infrastructure in turn or i don't know user experience in turn it just it just costs money and it costs manpower because somebody has to take care of such an intern and somebody has to mentor her of women that are wiki women, for example, because in Wikipedia for, there are not a lot of women contributors, and that's a problem, a problem in the aspect that Katerina explained. But I really agree with what you have said, because we had to work together with the person who understands the different um, field. For example, I'm not an informatic, I'm not a technique, and that's for this that in Rome, we decided to make a protocol with the Public Institute for Deaf because we have to implement with them their needs and what we, we can do to make them uh, more closest to LibreOffice. So that, that, that could be um, an idea for a practical, something that we can do in practice. So I think I mentioned before that uh, Wikipedia actually started the project that you mentioned because uh, they found out that there are, not a, uh, there are a few articles about notable uh, girls and women. Uh, and if you think that Wikipedia is one of the top five or ten websites, it influences a lot of people with information. Uh, which also makes the, the issue that we're talking about now even like worse, if you think about it. So one thing is the information and the intimidation you get, and the other one is that they, they don't have many contributions. Also, Wikipedia had last year, the, the last two years, had many, many issues uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, bullying cases against uh, some uh, contributors. Um, and they're trying to, to fix this. And I, this, is, this should be a case and a lesson for other communities in order to avoid these kind of situations before it becomes a, a, a major issue inside and within the, the community. Um, also, there is uh, one of the, the things they do, and this is what is good with the free software communities. You can also take good things from one community and bring them to the others. So what they, they always insist on having a code of conduct uh, many years before, so that even at, the, at meetups and conferences, uh, the, 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 let's say, gender issue is not uh, an issue at all. So they're trying to, to somehow uh, fix this uh, for the last years. I don't think it has been very effective um, and, and yet, and I think that um, it, like the, the steps need to be like faster. Um, it's like we had, um, I, I learned that there is a, a parliament uh, in a country that said, we, we will have by law 33% of women to be in the parliament, <laughs> which is even worse if you think of you know, imposing that. That's a big debate, but I think that you know, why 33 and not like uh, the same percentage with the population, right? Yeah, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that I think this, this needs to go faster. Uh, it's worldwide, yeah. So, sorry. We are not talking about uh, reserved seats, uh, absolutely not. No, no, uh, <laughs> no. As a, as an we want to, to be more inclusive. We, we yeah. won't have a... No, <laughs> okay. It's, it's what, I, what I told when Robinson asked his question at the end of my talk. This is, this is not about pulling people in and forcing them to do something they don't want to do and they're not interested in. This, is, this should all be about somehow pulling the people in who are staying out for no good reason. Yeah, but my question would be, how can you, you, uh, you know, make this, the whole process faster? 
Do you think it's, it's getting fast enough, like the inclusion um, in floss communities? Uh, personally, I don't think so. It, you know, I, I don't know what's the solution, but it seems that there is a long work, like, work to be done in many areas. There's a couple of solutions, and I outlined some of them in my talk. For example, providing some role models for the minorities, a good mentoring program, family-friendly events, some kind of, I, I know people see red when I say positive discrimination, but <laughs> it's really like some, some improved hiring practices, uh, simply like with the, with the internships, with the jobs, with the, with the mentees, I don't know, Google Summer of Code students, just be aware of, of those issues the, the minorities might have and actively, actively reach out to them because they wouldn't come by themselves. So actively seek out those people and encourage them to contribute. 